So the name of the piece is Gnosis Song. This is a work that is a collaboration amongst many people. Uh, of course, the two of us here, Greg Niemeyer and myself, Chris Chafe. Uh, perhaps the most important person in this work is a person who was a patient in a hospital and they were wired up with biomedical sensors and we recorded, well we didn't record, but doctors recorded some of the bodily signals from this patient. This recording, which is 21 minutes long, was during a very um, uh, tranquil period. The body was functioning. The mechanisms of the body were functioning well. And we have that data. And this piece takes you inside a network of sounds and a network of signals and a network of graphics, which Greg could explain uh, this world that we've created to take you inside of this person's body. Yeah, so the data takes us inside uh, the body and we're looking at a neural network of nerves responding to each other and working together sometimes and sometimes working on their own. And uh, we're very interested what you can learn about networks and life and existence just from looking at uh, the activities of nerves. <laughs> So the first step is to get really good data of uh, nerves firing actually at the speed um, of, of neural activity, which is a thousand hertz. And once we have really clean data, uh, we can uh, then look at that data in many different scales. And one scale is the musical scale, another scale is the visu visual scale, and the third is the, the compositional scale. Of, um, and, and, and there's also an interactive scale. <laughs> Well, in fact, uh, we've not simulated anything in this work. We're letting the signals speak directly to the listener. And that's a very important point because we could. we could. We could try to model the activity as some kind of a artificial system, and we could listen to that. And I actually do that a lot in other music that I make. I, I create algorithms that have their own kind of life and you can jam with them. This music is absolutely natural. It's the mechanics of this neural signaling that you're listening to directly. So think of it as uh, this network of nervous signals, nerve signals, as the performer. Uh, when we realized that it was actually more than one performer, we created this texture, which is, you know, involves the entire gallery space with many, many channels. Kind of like an orchestra? Kind of like an orchestra, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's an orchestra with those qualities that we've already t mentioned about being very synchronous sometimes and then maybe separating and having independent parts and then coming back together. But uh, the key thing I think I learned in making this piece was leave it alone, let it speak, because the more I got involved with, you know, you know, trying to recombine things or compose them, the worse it got. You know, so the, the actual natural fabric of this thing is where the, the music is for, for us. Well, the visual is actually based on the gallery because I got a map of the gallery and I saw where the speakers were. And I knew we had 15 channels of sound, right? right. And uh, we were going to use the eight channels that are already at the periphery of the gallery space. And we put uh, seven more channels in the middle. And so when I saw that I, I, as a map, I thought, OK, that's the basis for the visualization. I'm just going to make a map of the gallery that is the visualization of the sound. And so when you look at the image, you're actually looking at a top-down view of the space you're in. And you can see the. Uh, the, the animations showing where in the space that we created uh, the, the sounds come from and how they interact with each other. So, so the map of the space was the starting point for the design for the uh, uh, visual. It's, it's, it's 
always an object in work that we do together that we try to take people beyond their sort of common world of perce perception of the world, the way that we, you know, think and see and hear things. We, we, we try to step just a little further. And when we're doing data pieces like this, we're adding the ability to sense something in the data that would be obscure otherwise. We, we try to bring it to the surface where you can perceive it. Uh, and not in a way that's going to create some kind of scientific understanding in this case, or some explanation, but something more like an empathy or a feeling that brings you out of yourself into another, another place. And I, I always use the word teleportation. Um, you know, we're not actually physically trying to get you to displace yourself into a new place. It's not going to Mars. In this case, it's going inside. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you can go inside you know, without any medical tools <laughs> uh, necessary, great. You know, maybe we just give you a bit of a tour of, of some place that is very close to you that you've never been, perhaps. <laughs> Thank you.